the the yeah you know people were cheering when when the action went well and just yeah now the let's see yeah so let's get into the writing when one of the trailers for this movie featured a short glimpse at a poster saying protect trans kids, a lot of reactionary YouTubers, such as members of the Fandom Menace, freaked out making absurd accusations about child mutilation. Thankfully, as they are wont to do, the Fandom Initiative members helped fight back against it. And ultimately, there's not, like, in the movie itself, it's still this pretty much blink and you'll miss it. I don't I don't think the shot lasted any longer in the movie than it did in the trial. It's certainly not like a huge amount more. But the you know to the the movie is about you know defining your own story and living your truth. So, you know, the the arguably trans positive but yeah, I, I would have liked to see a more, like, direct, yeah, but the, the, um, yeah, let's see, the, yeah, the movie handles plot twists really well, and, yeah, each each concept is explored interestingly. Each character has their own voice and you can tell that like the 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 writers and directors actually do try to understand even like villain characters, you know, and that's what leads to better villain characters. And yeah, let's get into the direction. So yeah, like the first movie, you know, we've got amazing creative animation. It feels like a comic book come to life. Excellent soundtrack. Really captures a lot of different characters well. Movement appearance, the way they think. You know, the, these are movies that have empathy both for the parents, who from their point of view are trying to do the right thing, and the kids, who from their point of view find the parents really annoying. And... Let's see. Yeah, and you know, the the first one got to be a lot more comic booky after Miles get gets bitten and becomes a comic book protagonist. And this one is very comic booky from right away. And let's see. Yeah, and you know, Peter B. Parker is fun, but he definitely is not in the best place in the first movie. It's and you know, yeah, he's really pulled himself together. He's back with Mary Jane, and the the yeah, you know the the they had a, a kid together, little May May Day, and yeah, it's not a spoiler to say she also has spider powers, you know, passed on through the genes and. Uh, yeah, they they have some some great fun with that, and yeah, you know, I I it's not that I was really thinking that it would happen, but I suppose some people might have worried. Well, if Peter B. Parker has his life together now, like, is it still? How is he still funny? You know, and part of what makes him really funny now is that he does not stop obsessing over this little kid like he wants people to hug the baby to he wants to show them pictures even and and at one point someone's like the the baby's right there i can see her with my okay okay i'll, I'll look at pictures you know just yeah and and the the you know it, it's so frustrating when you you have a great uh uh pairing a great bonding uh um duo and they have great uh, chemistry and they're really really funny and charming together but they grow, go through growth in the first movie this is when it gets frustrating when you then get a sequel and they're like I don't know what, what are we supposed to do now that we don't have that you know that's when you get crap like Men in Black 2 you know this they just change the dynamic and find a new way to make it fun and and vibrant you know, and I'm I, I love it. It's 
just they're so talented the people working on this and let's see yeah and yeah in in both of these movies each action scene has enough distinct qualities from the others that the movie never has them just kind of gel together into indistinguishable slop the way that some comic book movies do you know, I love this medium, but some of them, let's be honest, yeah, the, the, you know, I love the MCU, but there's definitely sometimes it's like, okay, this is, this is an MCU action scene, like, I see what we're gonna do here, and, yeah, with this one, just, like, I, I, I did see some people say that they felt that the chases in the first one were too similar you know, so basically, yeah, I already mentioned I'm spoiling, so we're talking about when they're swinging away from Alchemax, we're talking about when Miles is trying to get away from the Prowler after Kingpin kills Peter, the original Peter Parker, and then we have the, um, I feel like there was a third one, but now I actually... Maybe that maybe there were just those two, but but yeah, you know, this one it really is like no, there there are no two action scenes in this that just feel like oh well that's just the same, you know. Despite the fact, you know, yeah, they they feature spider people and you know teleportation and such, and yeah, like they. They must legit have just sat down and, like, just brainstormed, okay, what is everything, what is, what are all the things that a spider can, you know, just everything, and, and they managed to, like, it's unreal, you know, this, this is one of those movies that you can watch ten times, and just, there, there are a bunch of scenes where, you can, each time you watch it, you could try to train yourself to focus on a different part of the, of the screen to take in a different character's animations and actions and just, you know, it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Now, let's see. Yeah, so, yeah, the first one, the major conflict for Miles is if he can be a good Spider-Man. By the end of it, he seems to have that down. And in this one, it's more acceptance of him. If other people, how how they feel about him being Spider-Man. Where in the first, you know, there was some of that in the first. But it is, it has a bit of a different flavor now. And in the first, he was legitimately, you know, it's only by the end when he makes the leap of faith. That's when he is fully, you know, up until then, he was kind of just reacting, you know, he makes a lot of mistakes in that first one. And, yeah, both of them have some fun with the tropes of Spider-Man movies, whilst also delivering a great Spider-Man movie both times. And I was a little worried, I guess they, they must have looked at, like, feedback, because something I did see some people say, and I, I hate to say it, but I do kind of agree, in the first one, it does somewhat lose focus on Miles when the, you know, it works when Peter B. Parker enters, it works when Gwen reveals herself as Spider-Gwen, but once the others, I love them, I do, I, I hate to say it, but once we get Spider-Ham, um, Spider-Noir and Penny Parker, it kind of loses focus on Miles, you know, and they they managed to to avoid that happening here. This one never lost focus on Miles. It was always his story. If he's not the one telling it, other people are telling his story, or at least in part telling his story. You know, when when he isn't on screen, people are talking about him, talking about his story. So just and and without it feeling awkward, you know. But there's like there's a scene where he's like he's late for a meeting at the gui guidance counselor for like uh, the, yeah they're they're thinking about how you know what college he's gonna is he going to attend. There's a set meeting time. He's out being Spider Man, you know. But the both of the parents are there, 
and the parents and the guidance counselor talk about, you know, this is Miles' story. What is going to happen? What is going to happen? What has happened? You know, so it's it's laser focused. It, the movie never stops being about Miles. You know, when when we're meeting new characters, it's about how they treat Miles and how he is affected by what they do. It's just they 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 do such an amazing job. And let's see, yeah, and and in the first one, you know, there's there's a spark between Miles and Gwen, and yeah, this one does further explore that. And, right, and, and, you know, maybe not every single one, but a lot of the best Spider-Man stories, and I'm talking regardless of medium, some of my favorite comic book storylines, there's a connection between the Spider-Man that it's centered on and the central villain of the story. And, you know, the in the, in the first Spider-Verse, you know, all the spider people have lost at least one person close to them and it motivated them to do good, whereas Kingpin lost his loved ones and did evil. You know, there's a there's a contrast there, but they have the same, you know, and that is, that that is, um, you know, you've, that's a thing in other comic books as well. The, the, you know, bad things happen to various people. The ones who choose to do good become heroes. The ones who you know, turn to evil, become villains. But yeah, the, the, I, I don't, I would consider it a spoiler. I'm not going to give away exactly what, but there is a connection. And the movie, it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Is the, this, I don't, I don't think I want to give away who, but my, but the villain of this is one of my favorite villains in a long time in a comic book movie. Now, let's see, the, right, and, and, you know, Peter B. Parker has the baby that he fathered in, I believe it's called a baby Bjorn, helping to normalize that, love to see it, it's, remember when, when, like, I want to say, was it Piers Morgan, a close, personal, a-hole, he was, he, he, like, there was, there was this picture of Daniel Craig, carrying, I think it was a baby Bjorn, carrying the, the baby that he had fathered, you know, to, so that his, his, I don't know if they were married, but his partner, you know, the, the, she carried it for nine months, she pushed it out of her body, when she needs you to, to, and, and don't, don't force her to ask for it, try to, try to anticipate, when she needs you, to, to help take care of the baby, do it. It's it's bare minimum for being a good father. So, yeah. Daniel Craig, there's this picture of him carrying the baby in a baby Bjorn, and Pierce Morgan is like, ah, oh, so, so, he's been emasculated. I think that was what he said. He's been emasculated. And then there were, like, straight women who said, no, that's, we want that. Like, w women find the the idea of a man who is willing to help take care of the baby that they had together extremely appealing. You know, and then Pierce is like, oh, well, um, you can't force me to think. It's just... You know what, Piers, Piers, just, just stop talking. It's, it's best for everyone if you just stop talking. It's, you're not doing anybody any good. And let's see. Yeah, so one issue Miles is dealing with in this movie, some people are saying Miles can't be Spider-Man. He's doing Spider-Man wrong. And the writers, directors have confirmed this is something that they use to comment on toxic racist fans who are saying that a person of color can't be Spider-Man. You may have seen the, the tweet, Miles Morales is Miles Morales. In, you know, when, when a progressive tweets... Miles Morales is Spider-Man, you know, because he is. The, the, you know, and the, the, yeah. I, I think they do a really good job in, in this movie commenting on that. And I, 
I'm really glad this is becoming a thing. Uh, it was also in, so it's it's in this, it's in Scream 5. Ah, uh, crap, are those really the only ones? Well, hopefully it will gradually spread more. She-Hulk, She-Hulk also did it. The, the She-Hulk she attorney at law. Uh, you know, yeah, I guess m those might be the only three that I... I'm familiar with but hopefully it will spread it's you know I, I think I think it's beyond just like kind of ridiculous I think it's legitimately pathetic if you're a toxic fan and you're spewing all your hate and then a piece of media calls you out and says don't be a bigot and you freak out like what did you think was gonna happen so you think you you should be able to spew all your hatred but the media that you've been consuming doesn't get to call you out for it. That's just completely absurd. That that's the thing. Like I, I've been saying this since I was a literal child. Like seeing other, you know, yeah. At the time, children, like just if you don't want trouble, don't you know what, what what's that thing? If you don't if you don't start nothing, there won't be nothing. You know. Not always the case, sure, but like if you're if you're spreading bigotry at some point, someone might call you out for it, and it might be someone that you at least claim to like. Now, right, so I've seen some criticize the fact that Jessica Drew in this fight's crime, despite being very pregnant, that you shouldn't do that in real life. I mean, no, I wouldn't want someone that that pregnant to do that in real life, but I also wouldn't want teenagers going out and fighting crime. Like, vigilantism in general, like, is is bad in real life. Like, this is all a power fantasy. This is supposed to make people feel seen, empowered, and yeah, pregnant people do get a lot of negative attention. You know, the, the Supreme Court recently, rem you know, ah, what's it called? Overturned Roe v. Wade putting a lot of pregnant people in danger and yeah I I really think this is a, a good way to help fight that and right so I have some critic quotes this takes the amazing animation of the first spider-verse to a whole new level very true all the different worlds have distinct look very true and the the Right, I, I'm going to really quickly, because this next one, an enjoyably exhausting screenplay is like a good workout. Sometimes I did wish that the movie would slow down and I could absorb all the information. I understand what he means, and for sure, like, there's definitely, it is a, there's a lot going on in, in a number of, uh, you know, and it is the kind of, I already mentioned, you can watch this a lot of times and pick up new stuff each time. But this isn't really, I, I definitely would not say that this movie, you, as long as you're okay with the fact that you can't pick up on every single little thing, like, the movie doesn't, confuse as such you know this isn't like a Michael Bay or Steven Somers movie where there's just so much going on that you you know and and the and the camera doesn't maintain a camera and editing does do not maintain focus that never happens here like I was never actually confused like there's there's a couple of times where you don't know exactly what's going on but it's supposed to be you know and it never lasts for very long, yeah, they they did an amazing job here making it. Yeah, I I honestly I thought it was gonna be just exhausting in a like in a in a negative way, and you just be like, okay, stop, just move on to you know. But it isn't like yeah, there there's a ridiculous amount of characters in this. Yeah, there's a a bunch of different worlds. And a ton of d d details, but it's actually not exhausting. Like they manage to make it, they they always manage to ground things in a way where you just 
yeah, you don't, you're not, you're not, you're not lost, you know. Right, and some people say, you know, Gwen is the heart of the movie 100%. And, yeah, you can go into this without having watched the first one. There is a recap. Now, some, there was at least two or three critics I saw that said, I, I just copied in one of them, but this one subs it up pretty well. Isn't it high time superheroes stuck a pin in one reality and ripped up their passports? You know, you're entitled to your opinion. I I don't think I personally would have made this the review where I put that forth, considering that this movie really shows... I feel like this movie is a tremendous counter-argument against that suggestion, but sure. This is also... This is... You know, this already has gotten a lot of really positive attention. This is something that is going to be extremely popular with... Yeah, it has a 96 right now on Rotten Tomatoes. This is going to be extremely popular with both... Um regular viewers and professional critics and I, I would I would be extremely surprised if this was not tremendously profitable also this is this is definitely yeah they knew that they didn't have to try the first one has us all sold although you know I suppose have to try to make sure we show up for the next one also but like still they really they they made an incredible effort, and let's see. Right, another critic says the action sequences are dazzling and innovative, but at least two major set pieces run far too long to the point where we're equal parts thrilled and exhausted. Given that this is just the first part, her first half of a two-part sequel beyond the Spider Verse is scheduled to arrive in theaters next spring, one can't help but consider if this might have worked better as a multi-part streaming series with each episode running 45 minutes or so. I I definitely do see what they mean. Um, I mean I think the main reason is the the big screen you know theater experience but i think an argument could be you know the uh, i wrote down yeah the movie is 2 hours and 10 minutes and that's without end credits i i wouldn't really say that i ever felt like the movie was was going on for too long but the fact that it is you know the middle chapter there's there's going to be more I think it might have been good if they could have trimmed it down just a little bit more but I'm not gonna claim that I really know what they what they would trim out like there's nothing in here that I felt like was just yeah unnecessary Anyway, more uh, the most important things to Miles and Gwen are each other and the people they love, which underscores the length to which they'll go to protect them. Great love triangle between Miles, Gwen, and Spider Punk, very much so. And it does um, explore grief some, and does a really good job, which you know I think is extremely important. Grieving is one of those universal yet taboo things. We will all do it at least once in our lives. If not for people, then for pets. It's extremely important to do it well in media. Now, let's see. That brings us... Right, so the... Yeah, the opening does a really great job setting up the rest of the movie and immediately catching your attention. And yeah, I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits with what came before. Yeah, the ending is, in my opinion, pretty much perfect. And yeah, does not rely on Deus Ex Machina or other convenient writing. This movie does not have a mid-credits or post-credits scene, at least according to Google. I did not stay to check for myself because I have not been led astray. The only time I ever missed one was when I didn't actually, you know, 
Google if there was going to be one. Let's see. So, let's get into the cast. So, Shamik Moore continues to be amazing as Miles Morales and the the relationship between him and his parents is really strong and the way that he feels you know, it's it is this thing of like his you know he feels like his parents are are pushing too much and they're worried that he's going to end up you know doing something going yeah you know he's he's going to throw his future away Haley Steinfeld as Gwen Stacy slash Spider Woman honestly I thought she was good in Hawkeye I like her a lot in the first Spider-Verse. I think she is amazing here. Like I I anyone who says that Haley Steinfeld cannot act, watch this. Look me right in the eyes. Okay, you can't because it's a camera, but I defy you to to make that claim again after watching this, because she does an amazing job. I in my opinion, Hawk with with Hawkeye the, the miniseries it was more writing and maybe also somewhat direction and yeah Jake Johnson as Peter B Parker is again great and yeah Issa Rae plays Jessica Drew slash Spider-Woman and in the comics she has like a mask with big yellow eyes you know typical Spider-Man eyes and here they they gave her like sunglasses that are super swank, by the way, and I love that. She, that's such a great because because that un enables you can you can see her eyes, and the animators like she she's not restrained in sharing her opinion verbally, but even so, her eyes like communicate so much. And Daniel Kaluuya plays Hobart Hobie Brown, or Spider Punk, a British punk rock version of a, of Spider-Man from an alternate universe that is ruled by a totalitarian regime. Like he is so freaking funny. Like he's constantly talking about like breaking rules and you know just the the yeah it's. I, I, it is, I, I, it's never a bad thing for Daniel Kaluuya to be in something, like, between, you know, there we go, between this, Get Out, Nope, Widows, Black Panther, like, just unreal how unbelievably talented, like, he can, he can play characters all over the, like, just no matter what you throw at him, he can almost definitely do it incredibly well. And just, yeah, he's he's so much fun. Honestly, although I suppose, yeah, honestly, any any major character from this, like, if you, if you make a feature-length spin-off, I will watch it in theaters, and I'm sure a lot of other people would very happily, you know, they don't all have to be Spider-Verse. You can just pick some of these characters because there's so there's so much there, there's so much texture. You can you can spend a really long time with these characters and never ever tire of them. Now yeah, so Jason Schwartzman plays Jonathan Owen, aka the Spot. And he is a villain whose body is covered by portals. And I know the comics treat him like a joke character. A lot of people don't have respect for him. Whether we're talking like in-universe or like in the real world. I've always thought that the concept, powers, and visual design of the spot are deeply compelling. And I cannot overstate how happy I am to see him on the big screen. If I traveled back in time and told my 13-year-old self that one day the spot would be important in a movie, 
13 year old me would not have believed it. It's just. Just. I honest, honestly, I don't. I think every single Spider Man villain that I really wanted to see in a in a movie on a big screen has actually been you know we've had green goblin we've had several of them we've had carnage venom the spot i am looking forward to seeing craven but yeah just and yeah brian tyree henry as jefferson davis miles the father again just really really strong performance and that's again like brian tyree henry just put him in something and he will do an amazing job like you know so in you've got him in these two you've got him in joker where he makes an impression even though it's a small role he's in widows just yeah amazing job and yeah you know in at the end of the first one you know Jefferson was like, I don't completely agree with your methods, but I can see that you are a good person with a good heart. You know, I can see us working together. And, you know, by, yeah, when this starts, I think it's supposed to have been like a year, or maybe half a year, I forget, but it's been months since the events of the first one. And, yeah, they basically, like, you know, Jefferson doesn't know who's behind the mask, but they kind of talk as if they're just colleagues. You know, there's a there's a scene where they're just talking and like sharing personal problems and it's just it's cuz like it's beautiful and I and the movie is actually saying it would be good if people had conversations and tried to solve problems instead of just punching a wall or yelling at someone, you know. But at the same time, like He's talking to his kid without knowing it, and the kid is wearing a mask and, like, fights people with with portals on their body. Like, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. And, and Luna Lauren Velez as Rio Morales, Ma's mother, a nurse who... You know, I on, other than this, I think the only thing I've seen her was on on Dexter. But she plays two such distinct characters. Like I would never have guessed that that she that that I would see her play so, a role like this. I would, you know, she's incredibly talented. Just yeah, Greta Lee plays Lila McGill's AI assistant, and they have some fun with her. Rachel Dratch plays the counselor that they talk to, and yeah, um, Jorma Takone plays Vulture, a bird-themed supervillain from a Renaissance-inspired universe, and he apparently the 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 actor previously voiced Norman Osborn, Green Goblin, and Peter Parker, Spider-Man from the 1967 TV series in Into the Spider-Verse. So, yeah, very cool to just, yeah, they have a lot of fun with, with the Renaissance thing. That's, yeah. Shea Wiggum plays George Stacy, Gwen's father, police captain. Oscar Isaac, just, can, 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 can he be in any? Can 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 we just put him in everything, please? Because he makes literally everything better. Star Wars: The Sequels. You know, there's definitely some issues there, but whenever he's on screen, it's a it's, things are good. You know, he's he's amazing in Moon Knight. Just, and he's so freaking good here. You know, I I have to admit, when I when I saw him. In the in the post credits to the first movie, I did not think that I would like. I was happy that I would see Oscar Isaac in something important again, in in an important role in something again. But I I did not foresee how much I would love the character in in this. The uh, yeah, 
and yeah, he plays Oscar Isaac plays Miguel O'Hara, Spider Man twenty ninety nine, and yeah, he's the leader of the Spider Force, and yeah, and his alternate universe is set in the year twenty ninety nine. And Isaac described O'Hara as the one Spider-Man that doesn't have a sense of humor. And the production team nicknamed him Property Damage Spider-Man due to the amount of destruction that he leaves in his wake. Yeah. They have a lot of, of fun with his character. Like, his character is not trying to be funny, but... Oh, Amanda Stenberg. Awesome. I gotta watch her and more. Like I, I thought she was amazing as Rue in Hunger Games. I guess I haven't really seen. I, I apparently she has. I've, I, you know, I've been paying a little bit of attention, and apparently she has been become a really big deal in the years since. She was, she was amazing. Like if Rue didn't work, a chunk of the first Hunger Game movie just does not w would not work, and I do think it does. But yeah, I, I gotta see, yeah, The Hate You Give, I gotta, I gotta see that. Oh, right, she's Spider Bite. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's fun. There's a, she's basically like an, an avatar kind of, like, yeah, she's, she's essentially, you know, and, and she's, she's sitting on a gamer chair. She says that, the character says this herself with like, VR goggles strapped to her forehead, you know, and uh, yeah, over the, the eyes, and and you know, yeah, she's she's running stuff in the 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 lab at the of of the Spider Force HQ, you know, the the yeah, they yeah, she's she's a really fun character, and Karan Sony plays Pavitra Prabhakar. Spider-Man India and yeah lots of fun with with him um, and if you think you recognize his voice or his face you know one one thing where a lot of us remember him from is the the two Deadpool movies as Dopinder and he's also Kelvin in Not Okay yeah, he's he's really really funny, and yeah, it's super cool to see. You know, it in in Deadpool, like it's in the first Deadpool. Essentially, it's like oh, you know, cab driver. So of course he's got to be like Indian or something. But here it actually is. No, he's you know everything about him is Indian. So his relationship with his you know, with the people around him is very, very Indian, very, very distinct from America. You know, there is still, you know, oh, that's the girl he likes, but he can't, like, be, you know, if her father finds out that the two of them, you know, like each other, that could be a problem. So he has to pretend, you know, which... I can imagine, like, yeah, the Indians watching this movie are probably like, yep, that's, mm hmm And the, the, just, yeah, there's some, there's some really great jokes with him. The, the, um, I don't know, I don't know if I want to give anything away, but just, yeah, there's some, there's some really fun, there's a, there's a gag where, like, he hates that, you know, Miles tells him, I, I love chai tea. And pa Pavitra is like, chai tea? Chai is tea. You just said tea tea. You know, and yeah, they have some, some fun with that. I don't feel bad about mentioning that one. That one is in at least one of the trailers, I think. it, it Yeah, you know, it was, but, but yeah. And... We also have the. Let's see if I can find. Yeah, Andy Samberg voices Ben Riley, which is also just like, I can't say how happy I am that Ben Riley is finally in one of the like. It's it's so 
yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, to, like, I know they're not actually going to do a film adaptation of the Clone Saga, and I really hope not, because that movie, get, that storyline sucked, but anyway, Ben Riley was one good thing that did come, technically come out of the Clone Saga, so, yeah, really, really glad that, yeah, and let's see, then we have, yeah, and there's just the the various universes that they visit, um, I don't, I don't want to give anything away, I'm, I'm going to talk about them in the, in the spoiler section, but yeah, just, they, there's so much, such fun, <sighs> stuff with with that just yeah the dialogue is excellent um every single character like if you if you wrote a line from this movie and like just you know yeah if you if you remove if you if you if you don't attribute it to anyone and you just have the words exactly the way that the the person says them there's some chance that, you know, one would be able to deduce, oh, that, that must be that character. They all have such distinct ways of talking. Like, the teenagers, very distinctly, you know, different, and the, the, the more adult ones, you know, especially the ones who either are or were parents, you know, there's a very, very clear, and, and like, just... The, yeah, the people making this have empathy for each of them, because it is, like, I'm not a parent, but, you know, I've watched a lot of media that has, you know, conveyed the, the point that when you become a parent, everything changes. The, your entire outlook on the world changes, because now it's not just you, it's not just those closest to you, you are responsible for this person that you put in the world, you know, you, you have got to guide them until they can be on their own, you know, and yeah, the, this actually does understand that and, and manage to, like, you, you know, it, it's basically like the, the kids watching will really understand the, the younger characters and the parents watching will really understand the parents. And it, it really doesn't, like, I'm, I'm so tired of movies made for, like, children and teenagers that just kind of paint adults, especially parents and teachers and such, as just, like, I don't know, I mean, I guess they hate you? They, yeah, they hate you. They, I, I don't know, they, they think you're the worst thing in the world, and they want you to fail, and they hate your dreams, and they think you're an idiot and ever nothing you do or think or say could possibly ever be right and it's like okay sure there's some people like that for sure but like people who choose to become parents at least like there tends to be some you know there's 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 usually at least some love towards this this tiny person that they have put in the world and yeah, I, I really appreciate this kind of, yeah, some a, a piece of media that actually empathizes with them. Now, th yeah, so this being an animated, I can't, there isn't a single cinematographer, but the cinematography is absolutely amazing, like, Obviously, the moment that your protagonist is Spider-Man, it's very important that swinging looks good and feels right, and it does. And the you know they they have some fun with like some some of these Spider people happen to feel more comfortable if they're upside down, you know. So they do, you know. Yeah, sometimes the the camera will actually you know, technically be right side up, but it looks like it's, it's right, bec or, yeah, technically be upside down, but it looks like it's, it's right,
but you can tell that they must be upside down because like someone's hair is is sticking up the way it only would if they were hanging downwards and the hair is being pulled by gravity you know so just yeah and and the the um, the use of color the the way that things just yeah i i absolutely amazing and yeah the the um, yeah, editing wise, like the the, um, I've seen some people say that it starts slow. I mean, I guess I can see what they mean. I I certainly was never bored, but it is true that it does not start right away. It's it starts by setting some stuff up that's going to be really important for later, and then after you know, I I don't think it is very long into the movie and. You know, it's not that nothing is happening, it's just not as large scale as it gets later. And, yeah, absolutely amazing animation, just the, 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 all, all these, all these different spider people that move in different ways and, like, you know, you've got this. This features characters that can fly. There's teleportation. There's all kinds of like. It's it's like they they deliberately like. It seems like some sort of demented game, like like a or or some kind of you know monkey's paw kind of thing. Where like okay. Let's, you know, so someone said, ah, oh, I would love to do, like, the ultimate Spider-Man movie, and, like, the monkey's paw finger crosses over, and, you know, suddenly he, the, the guy realizes, oh, that means you have to design 300 different characters, and, you know, let, let me, I think I can get the, I believe I have the right number somewhere around here let's see uh, hmm. two hundred and forty characters six universes Lord and Miller revealed that they told Sony the sequel would be the same size as Into the Spider-Verse, which sounds to me like a bald-faced lie, but it ended up having the largest crew of any animated film ever, with around a thousand people working on it. Just, yeah, like, I still love the first one. I'm not saying that the first one isn't still amazing, but the the size is is just absolutely huge and that brings uh, right so the let's see the yeah the budget is 100 million which i would be extremely surprised if they don't make a massive profit and yeah the the action is just it's amazing how well the you know, it uses all these superpowers and gadgets and locations and all the different things that can happen in the this world th that it you know that the movie sets up. And yeah, so the music is by Daniel Pemberton and yeah, one hundred and thirty seven uh, concluded composing credits two upcoming including uh, yeah one of them is the the third spider-verse beyond the spider-verse and yeah uh, he does an amazing job here and the 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 license music is also amazing yes he did also compose for the first spider-verse and yeah, he's done a bunch of genre fair 
yeah, very firm grasp on genre and uses it really well here. And the sound design is amazing. Like the the yeah, the various spider people and their various unique uh, you know abilities and such all sound distinct from each other. And Yeah, the the pacing wise, once the movie does, you know, I would I would say maybe the first twenty or twenty five minutes of it are set up, and after that it really takes off. And yeah, I would say watch the first thirty or thirty five minutes, and if somehow you're not still interested after that. Yeah, I mean, I guess go go ahead and and stop watching. And yeah, so there's it's a it's a tie. The best elements of this are the style, the characters, the cast, the creativity on display. Ah, uh, yeah, this is where I try to force myself to say at least one negative thing. I guess overall the fact that it is a two hour ten minute movie and it is technically an incomplete story that's probably the the biggest but you know at, at, when when this stuff like it worked extremely well for Avengers 3 and 4 so I really don't blame studios for still yeah now, let's see, so the, um, yeah, um, that was also what other people said. And, you know, ultimately, I don't think it's a big problem. And, like, don't rob yourself of the experience of watching this really soon and watching it on a big screen, watching it surrounded by people who love this kind of thing by waiting and seeing if the if the third is a satisfying conclusion i i would definitely say to watch it as as quickly as you can and honestly multiple times the thing i was most worried about was that it would be overwhelming and yeah it 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 was never overwhelming it wasn't underwhelming it was it was very very whelming, which is appropriate because I am in Europe. And yeah, the thing I was most looking forward to was more of what we got in the first one, and the movie majorly exceeded my expectations. Like this is probably five times the movie that the first one, as far as scope goes, and just yeah. And I, I would say the trailers and cover and poster do give at least a little bit too much away, but they do also give you a really good idea of what the movie is like. So, you know, maybe peek a little and just try not to think too hard about the things you see. So, yeah, on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 96%, 135 reviews, only six rotten, the rest are fresh. The average rating is 8.70 out of 10. And the consensus is just as visually daz dazzling and action-packed as its predecessor. It thrills from start to conclusion. And then we have Metacritic, where it has an 86, which makes it a Metacritic must-see. And it's thir there's 38 critic reviews, 33 of them are positive, 5 are mixed, none are negative, and let's see, yeah, so one of the, one of the mixed ones says it's ponderous, which I suppose I can see, and... Another says the detail and the emotion can get lost in the splurge. I mean, I would. Okay, may maybe a little bit briefly, sure. And yeah, then we have the one with one guy saying, you know, maybe we 
should stop doing multiverse, which I just, I I feel like that's kind of like that's like putting a man on the moon and then saying I think this NASA thing has kind of run its course. Can we let's let's be real here? Like I feel bad for Tim Roby for for putting that forth. It's even it's the quote when you go to Metacritic. I don't think that's going to age very well. And let's see. Then we have the One person says it's hard to relate to. I don't know. I, yeah, I disagree. And um, yeah, and and the last one says it indulges in what feels like sensory overload. Now, on IMDb, it has a 9.1 out of 10. 61.5% of the 4,700 users gave it a 10 out of 10. 19.9 .9 gave it a 9, 9.5 gave it an 8, 3.3 gave it a 7, 3.3 .3 gave it a 1. A 1. I... I try, usually fail, to not think the worst of people, but giving this movie a one, that really sounds like you're just opposed to something about it. Maybe this is like the the racists and the transphobes that, yeah, that just, anyway. 1.1% gave it 6, 0 0.6 gave it 5, 0 0.2 gave it 2, 0, uh, 0 0.5 gave it 2, 0 0.2 gave it 4, 0 0.1 gave it 3. I don't know how anybody would rate this lower than, at the very, very least, a 7. And, yeah. Let's see. And that brings us to... Yeah, so in the description box, I'm going to put the fandom initiative videos that you know talk about the 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 transphobia that the one of the trailers was met with and if i if i find stuff that's about the movie not the trailer and the that controversy i will put that in the you know, I, I may well put that in the description box as well. But, yeah, um, I rate this 10 vivid creative comic books put on this little screen out of 10. I could watch this again tomorrow. Like, it's a little too late to watch it again tonight, but, like, tomorrow morning, sure. And, let's see, the... Yeah, so I am Why do I have two of these? Okay. Um yes. So the the ranking of all of the Spider-Man related movies from worst to best Morbius, Venom 1, Spider-Man 3, Venom 2, Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, The Amazing Spider-Man 1, Homecoming, Far From Home, Spider-Verse 1, No Way Home, Civil War, Spider-Verse 2, Avengers 3, and Avengers 4. There we go. Yeah. I did not think that would be possible, but I... I... Th 
I like it even more than No Way Home, which I gave a 10 and stand by. Yeah, just truly amazing movie. And I am going to get into the spoilers, so if you haven't watched the movie, please don't watch on from here. I would hate to, to ruin it for you. So, notes taken while watching, and these are on. I actually managed to fill out an entire one of the... the not since Endgame did I use an entire pad. I didn't get far into the second one where, you know, Endgame I managed to take up two entire pads. But, and, and also had to write on, like, both sides of the paper on something. Anyway. So, yeah, like with the first Spider-Verse, the logos are multiversal, and Gwen retells the events of the first Spider-Verse, which helps set up, set, yeah, set up their relationship. You know, this is where a lesser film would just have, you know, because it's like, we can't expect people to have it fresh in, our, fresh in their memory. The, you know, the first movies from, like, what, 2018 or something? Yeah. You know, five years. We can't ex expect people to remember every single little detail. I don't know. I guess have have someone recount it, I guess. But the way she describes it, you know, you can tell that, like, and it's also clear that this is, this is Gwen telling it after the, the you know, after she knew she had to lie to Miles. And, you know, they do a good job using, mul you know, on, you know, yeah, multiple times she says, and he's not the only one, you know, and the, let's see, and, and I, I like that, you know, yeah, at the end of the, the, in, in the first one, when they got to the end of, you know, yeah, the each each Spider Man origin, Spider Persian origin, they would say, you know the rest. But here she says, you don't know the rest, and you know she says that she hurt Miles, and he's not the only one, which is just a great like, and it's like if you've never read a comic book, that is something that they will sometimes do. It's, you know, it's it's a good way to get people hooked. Like, what do you mean you hurt him? What do you mean he's not the only one? You know, just immediately we gotta know what happened. And we, yeah, we find ourselves in Gwen's world and we get editor's notes. I, I remember editor's notes. I haven't read comic books in like, what has it been, 15 years? 16 years? I remember editor's notes. It's, it's such a great little, you know, and, and if you've never opened a comic book, you know, it's still, there's still enough there that you're going to understand what it is. It just isn't going to be as much of a, you know, nostalgia thing. Or nostalgia at all, I suppose. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, Gwen deals with her emotions with the band, but the others, they don't want it to be like that. And, you know, it's it's a great, because in the first one, we see her, you know, hitting the drums, and then it just moves on, and here we see, yeah, she does that, but it's not enough. You know, it's, and it's a great, because it recontextualizes that. You know, it's not that, Oh, she no longer plays the drums. You know that that could also work, but you have no. She's been playing the drums for all these months. It's not enough. You know she needs a friend. And yeah, Peter Parker, the Goblin, fights Gwen. Very emotional goodbye. When. You know, she realizes it's Peter, and he dies right in front of her. 
And yeah, she says, you know, Peter was the last friend she made until Miles. The the yeah, that I I again, that's a really great way. At this point, we still haven't like we haven't seen anything new with Miles yet. But when, you know, from now on, every time we see the two of them together, this helps, like, now, yeah, now we know why, you know, why she felt so bad about lying, why she did go to Miles, even though, yes, she was supposed to go to that universe, she wasn't supposed to talk to him. She was supposed to, you know, only go after the spot. And I like that J. Jonah Jameson is trying to reveal who Spider Woman is. You know, no matter what Spider person you are, J. Jonah Jameson and Gwen and her dad argue over the you know who. Yeah, should he be trying to catch Spider Woman? And I really love the way that the colors wash over and bleed into, and the the use of panels, just and and yeah, the the like the colors of Gwen's dimension. I'm so glad we get to see more. I think they did do the same thing in the first one, but ultimately that was only montage. It's the fact that we're getting scenes in Gwen's dimension, and we're seeing because they they do like the entire. All of the colors will be based on the emotional state. And just, yeah. It's the kind of thing that, like, a lot of live action, like, technically you can do it in live action. There's a lot of live action directors that just don't, they're, they're afraid. They're not willing to take that risk. And, yeah, you know, the, the yeah, really, really great to see it here in animation. And let's see. Yeah, I, I like when when you know the the yeah the the cops are outside of where the uh, the vulture is, you know, and the and and um, Captain Stacy is like, okay, Spider Woman might show up, so let me know if you see any sign of her, you know, and then they all get webbed up. And the, the person next to her is like, we found her. And I like that Gwen, and later also Miles, you know, when they're talking to their cop father, but they're in costume, they change their voice a little, and it's just, it's really adorable, and, and kind of, like, they're they're very much doing, like, the voice of like this this is what an adult son sounds like isn't it just kind of deep in your voice and you know completely just yeah and and the yeah the renaissance vulture i can 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 he get a spin-off movie cuz i'll pay i'll i'll watch it you you've guaranteed got millions of viewers for that like and i like the the meta commentary on the on the art and like one of the art like it you know it look yeah you think oh it's like an art installation and then they they break this big thing and like candy falls out like it's a pinata just yeah and miguel rescues gwen so you can understand why she trusts him so much and you know it's not easy for her to you know, go against him at the end of, of the movie. And, yeah, really solid intro to Miguel. He's he's incredibly intense. You can also see, like, you understand why a lot of spider people follow him. And, yeah, you know, it's explained Kingpin's Collider left a hole, and these villains are going through and I like the bit with with backup and like 
She said, no, say it again, say it again. I already called it. But that was fun for me. And, you know, he's got a, like, vampire bite into the, just, holy crap. Yeah, the 2099, there, there was some pretty intense stuff in that. It was, it was a fun read. And I really love the, the, <laughs> um, you know, Gwen sees, oh, you're, like, really pregnant. You know, Jessica's like, you know, I, we don't know the gender. My, my husband doesn't want to know. He's, what was it? He's such a, you know, he's, he's so corny, but so hot or something like that. And, and Gwen is like, can you adopt me? It's just, and, and she's like, oh, did I, I didn't mean to say that out loud. And I like the detail that after the heroics, Gwen collapses, you know, nice realistic moment. And, you know, the cop sneaks up. The um, st yeah, Captain Stacy sneaks up, and you know yeah, she points out I just saved people, and you know he he fires the gun into the you know making it clear he's going to shoot her. She has a real mask off moment, and he's actually going to you know he's going to arrest her after that, and he says you know how long have you been lying to me and I appreciate that they call the the movie calls out a cop giving unfollowable orders which in real life people have been shot over struggling to follow and Miguel rescues Gwen from her father trying to arrest her and Yeah, and I really appreciate the, the you know when when she says to her father, "You are you're all that I have," you know, and that's that's not enough. He still, you know, insists on trying to arrest her. And yeah, and then we have when when they're, you know, the the um um Miles' uh, parents. And the guidance counselor trying to talk about college, and he's fighting the spot, and just like I could, I could go on forever just talking about the spot. I love that, like you know, I mean, he he makes a good point. He doesn't have a face, like he can't, he can't get a normal job. So now he's turned to crime, you know, and the fact that Spider-Man tries to but fails to stop him and, and shows him no respect you know you could tell this is a guy who's been overlooked many times you know which I mean working for Kingpin yeah probably I mean we saw how he treated Doc Ock and she was the lead you know she was in charge obviously own has been treated even worse than that you know and yeah just the the you know he he put on like a, a hat and a and a coat. He walks past. Do you have an ATM? You know, it goes in and like okay. If I put my hand in, you know, and hand goes in, and then it comes out on the other side and just and he tries to teleport it out of the building and tries to drag it past slowly. Just. Absolutely love it, and yeah, we we hear that you know he worked at Alchemax, and you know he points out, I'm not technically robbing you, I'm I'm stealing from the bank, and they're the real criminal, right? And you know the the and Miles is like, why do people call it an ATM machine? M already stands for machine. Let's see, and. What on earth does that mean? Okay. Uh, right, right. Um, Miles has been Spider-Man for one year and four months. And, you know, he's... I endorsed baby powder. And then I apologized. And... 
I got a mustache. Oh, I apologized. And it is like that is legitimately a, a funny, you know, like we have no idea what was wrong with the baby powder, but just like this kind of contrast between, you know, I endorse baby powder, which you would think, oh, yeah, baby powder, that's, uh, but there was something horribly wrong and he had to apologize. You know, it's a it's a joke about cancel culture, obviously. And and like this kind of the the apology video, the the kind of thing. And yeah, that really is something that, you know, we have to make some jokes about. It's it's legitimately, you know, I'm I'm progressive, so I do think that there are some people who should be cancelled, but the the way that cancel culture there's there's definitely some really ridiculous you know yeah some people who definitely shouldn't have been canceled and some people who definitely should be who haven't been and he still m misses uncle Aaron which of course sets up you know later when he sees him again yeah and <laughs> during the fight he's checking his cell phone and and spot is like what this is are, are you serious you you turn off your cell phone to watch a movie but not to fight me you know just and and you know this thing of the punch into one of them and then the the arm or leg comes out somewhere else and and the and at one point they're like going through portals and they're doing like a slap fight. It's just it's it's so funny. And yeah, so Miles thinks that now Spot is is in, you know, he can't get out from there. And you know, he goes to to go to the the meeting with the guidance counselor and turns out that the the um, what was his name Ned um okay apparently not the the roommate just like 100% does not want to be the guy in the chair which is a great you know reversal of because like you know obviously there's some similarities other other than that there's some similarities between him and Ned Leeds in the MCU Spider-Man movies, and he loved being the guy in the chair. So just yeah, and it's it's funny that you know he's he's getting great grades in you know these various you know classes, but Spanish he only you know he got like the second top grade or something like that. And, you know, his mother is furious because she's been speaking Spanish to him since he was a baby. How does he not speak fluent Spanish at this point? You know, so just, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's that's a very, because, you know, she feels like you can't, you can't abandon that. You can't let that just disappear. And... Yeah, and then the the thing with the <laughs> I really like when when he's like explaining some kind of science concept for the for the New Jersey school, and Jefferson's like, mm -hmm, yeah, and then after a couple of things, he's like, I have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> and the the thing with you know, you're you're an immigrant family and you're struggling. I'm not an immigrant. Puerto Rico is part of America. I mean, we're not struggling. It's a it's a nice apartment. You know, you're all struggling, which is again like, you know, representation extremely important. It's important to take these things seriously, but there are some people who are like, no, no, no. Listen, listen to me. I'm sure that you're really struggling. You know, so yeah. Again, something that needs to be called out. And and it is really funny the the thing that you know the the mother uh, uh, Rio I think her name is is like that's too far away and Miles is like New Jersey is too far away from New York 
really really funny and and yeah it it is that thing of like you know he wants to go to Princeton in New Jersey and she is afraid of letting you know she she's struggling to let go you know and yeah it's a it's a very you know yeah lot, lots of parents have have found themselves in that situation and let's see um yeah and and yeah we find out you know spot was the one who brought the spider to that that bit miles and he's the one who you know and and yeah he was close when the collider blew up which means that he you know and and that was when he became the spot so yeah, he feels like they're connected, you know, and yeah, it it is that thing of you know that's a again a lot of lot of great Spider-Man stories. It is that thing of like Spider-Man didn't think he was what he was doing was making a mistake, but yeah, the the I mean I suppose nobody ever thinks they're that it's a mistake or they wouldn't be doing it, but yeah, the way he treats. Jonathan does make you know it's really upsetting to to Jonathan and that's why he becomes so motivated to to, to yeah do all these awful and I I really love the way that like here at the very start like he has no idea how to use this part like he's he is a he is aware that he can like if he if he puts if he pushes his hand into something and like focuses he can he can open a portal so it goes into instead of him just bopping his hand into but he's not really good at doing you know and yeah over time he you know yeah he keeps doing the the collider blow up thing and you know, in a bunch of different universes, gets better and better at using the powers, and yeah, I I, I really admire how well they did at like at first he is just he is legitimately a joke, you know, the the way that he is in the comics, but then they actually you know the the writing team went in and said, well, I mean, if we actually do something with it, it could be extremely like. It's very very compelling and yeah you know when when he's fighting them in Mumbatan and the the yeah just really really you you can really see he got way way better at using the powers and I like that miles uh, that Jefferson doesn't jump this, you know he's he's facing this really you know really dangerous jump but instead he just run you know he takes the stairs which is a lot you know in in the first movie miles you know almost jumped off a building to test his powers but then actually you know ended up going back down the stairs and then jumping off a different building Let's see and yeah, I, I like when they have therapy with you know Miles and Jefferson, but you know Miles is in a suit and Jefferson has no idea that he's talking to the the yeah that that was really funny you know and I I like the the thing with you know he just he he says such smart things. Hmm. But then he does the stupidest things, and Miles is like, "Whoa, you know, maybe she needs off the kid a little." What? What? <laughs> right. And and Spot is like expanding his powers, and he's going into all these different, you know, Spider-related universes, and he pops into the the shop from the Venom movies. I cannot believe I don't remember. I. I'm gonna really quickly find the 
the character's name is it's gotta be um unreal okay the the sequel has to have it right so the there let him let there be carnage and mrs chen played by peggy lou great to see her again and and yeah you know as as own points out it you just i just opened a portal to another dimension and you're looking like this is just tuesday which is is great you know that is very accurate like she is very i suppose in the first one she has a reaction to the fact that venom eats a person in front of her but like other than that like in the second one she takes a lot of stuff really really well so yeah by by this point yeah and <laughs> there's a lego world <laughs> and and like when when he's using the communicator watch he's like making noises with his mouth because that's what you do when you're playing with legos you know they don't make noise on their own so that's a that's a great little detail and there's that bit with like really classic animation I guess the maybe is that supposed to be like the 60s yeah it, it's old for sure and I really love okay is um, okay so I haven't found confirmation But I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm almost 100% certain that J.K. Simmons is the one playing J. Jonah Jameson in, in the Lego version. So that's great. And... Um... What on earth? Okay, I do not know what that means. I, I, oh, right, right, yeah. Rio is given the, the microphone and starts giving a speech and starts talking about how big Jeff was as a baby. And again, I, you know, I think that is a thing that that's like, um, a, a Latina mother oversharing kind of thing. And I really do appreciate, you know, even now, like, Jeff is certain that Aaron went to heaven. You know, he's he's not saying, I wish I could have saved him from going down there. He says, I know, right now he's up there laughing at us. You know, so that's a that's a really great... And, you know, we, we see the... the rest in power graffiti there and at the end of the movie in the other universe that's where you know miles um what's the word uh yeah that that's where miles's father not uncle aaron died and Yeah, I appreciate, you know, Jeff points out, I used to be kicked out of, of stores, and now I'm a cop. And the cakes get left in the cab, and he has to chase after it, and arrives late. It's really, really funny, you know, and again, like, it's the kind of thing that could have happened in one of the comics. And... the 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 um jeff says you know i had to study for 9 months for this it was almost like giving birth 
and, you know, right, like, he barely got the words out before Rio said no. And there was also, like, when I watched it in the theater, there was a, a woman sitting to the left of me, and she was also like, no, dude, no, 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 no. It's just, yeah, never say that. Please never, ever say that. That's one of the things where I'm like, no, men cannot handle pain as well as women. Women give birth. Women have periods. There's no way that, like, just, yeah. You know, they, they did that. There was that thing where they, like, tested male birth control. And, like, the men were like, I can't do this anymore. It's, like, making me emotional. And there's some pain involved. And it's like... No, really? Really? Birth control can mess with your emotional state, and it might, there might be some pain involved. Like, have you never looked at what birth control, like some of the side effects for women? Just, yeah. And. Yeah, the the there's that thing of you know Rio points out you know several generations of our family have worked to get to this point you know they really feel like he's throwing everything away and I gotta say um, I really I I'm gonna real quick check. Um, hmm. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But the the um, I gotta say, it really appeared to me that the guy in purple and with the very specific glasses at the party that that was, I mean, I, if they asked Samuel Jackson to voice, I'm sure he would gladly, you know, he loves comic books. You know, he, he was doing comic book movies back when comic book movies were way smaller. He was in Unbreakable, you know, in, what was it, 1998 or something. So, or wait, well, yeah, t uh, 2000 or 2001, right, but yeah. I, I gotta say, that really, really looked like him, but I suppose it is possible that someone's just jacking his style or something, but just, yeah, the the purple, and he, he it looked like the way that Sam Jackson sometimes does in, you know, public stuff, so, yeah. And... And I do really love, like, he, you know, Miles was so careful about, okay, so I wanted to say this and this and this on on the cakes, and then you know he, yeah, he he gets up to them. It's like you're gonna love it. You know, I wrote something really supportive, and you know, I'm not proud. And it's like because we know, oh, but they were in like a cab, and he, you know, he th whipped them from way down there all the way up. Of course, they got smushed. But the parents think he just carried the, the boxes of, of cakes up the stairs. And, you know, if you're not, like, running, if you don't bump into something, it's not going to get smushed, you know. So it's just, yeah. And... Yeah, and, and Gwen comes to, to visit him. And, you know, she's like, oh, I have this toy, too, but why is it still in the box? And, oh, oh, you know, she takes it out of the box and puts it, and she's like, there, that's how it's supposed to be. And, you know, it's a, it's a little sexist to have the, the joke that, you know, the girl doesn't get the boys, like, collectibles more than toys, but it was still pretty funny. And, you know, she sees all the drawings he's done of her... And she's like, I missed you too, which is a s sweet, you know, instead of, like, having her laugh at him or something. 
and yeah, they're a really great duo. I love when they're like swinging around and like, you know, like she's like, okay, that guy, he's gonna, he's about to, you know, because Spidey sense and such, and they're working together to, to, you know, yeah, just swinging through. The, it's, it's like, yeah, two, two friends reconnecting after a long time and they still play off each other really well. And yeah, I like that you know they're they're hanging upside down. And there's the point made that Gwen and Spider-Man fall in love, but it ends badly in a lot of different universes. And Miles keeps being grounded for longer and longer. I really love when like you know Miles and and Gwen go back to the party and you know before Rio and Jet before officer ah hold on wait he's not captain yet is I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead before Captain Davis and ah uh, hold on Holy crap, where did... Th uh, there we go. And Mrs. Morales, you know, before they go up to the two of them, they're like, I don't know, I mean, just, you know, they're talking about the age and, and the, you know, and then they go up there, and it's like, so, you two, and, and you know, Gwen, she's not trying to be disrespectful, but, you know, she she addresses them by their first names, and and you know she wasn't thinking that she was gonna be meeting the parents, so just it's a it's a great little scene with all of these things of like you know because like she thinks that by saying I know your names she's like showing you know this this is not like the the I'm not trying to take him away from what you're trying to build for him because she you know she has a father she understands that you know this is about the you know parents trying to to protect their kids so she's like you know I'm not trying to take him away from I I know who you are he's talked about you you know but to them it's like who do you think you are you can't talk you you can't refer to us by our first names that's disrespectful you know, you're you're in the presence of your elders. You should be referred to us as as sir and missus and and such. You know, so just a great little you know because because Gwen, as we realize later, she's still like on some level thinking I I gotta I gotta keep an eye on the spot because this could get dangerous. And. Yeah, Gwen leaves very suddenly, and Miles and the parents think, "Oh, we, you know, the parents scared her off." When in reality, you know, no, it was because the spot went, you know, he he disappeared, and and yeah, Rio is trying to be supportive of Miles and sends him after Gwen and and does say you're still grounded. I'm smiling like it's a joke, but it's not a joke. And I like that you know when when they're like swinging past there's like a a, a banner that or, yeah, an ad for for soda and it just says it's a generic brand. <laughs> which I I appreciate, you know, truth in advertising. Which is still the best Venom live action story. And let's see. Or wait, that's truth in journalism. Well, anyway, yeah. And the yeah, you know, Miles follows Gwen, and they both see what Spot did. And she says the word "shoot" like seven times. I mean, I understand why it's not the S word, because if she said that seven times, that's not a PG-13 anymore, that's like an R rating, just off that. 
Let's see. Yeah, and, and Jessica Drew and Gwen talk while Miles hears and he understands that, you know, Gwen has lied to him. And, yeah, Miles jumps through the, the portal across the universes. And, yeah, absolutely love the Indian Spider-Man, the, the thing with, you know, chai tea. Do you hear me saying, asking for a coffee, coffee with cream, cream, you know, and... Uh, was there was some other yeah and then the punk brings up non bread just someone brings up non bread and and you know that non means bread you know and then later spot is like i love chai tea and indians like you know, shut up i i i would i would really really love a a spin off with you know, focusing on Indian Spider-Man and, like, Mumbatan and the, yeah, the, the, I, I really love the thing with, you know, so let me show you around. There's traffic. There is also traffic. There's more traffic. There's the part where the British stole everything from us. I just, the, the, yeah. And I, I like that when, you know, when they talk about chai tea, you know, Miles is accidentally spilling tea all over the place. And, yeah, and, and, um, Miles is trying to break the force field with a venom blast, and then Punk breaks, Punk breaks it, and... I really like the black and white spot sequence. That legitimately, you know, PG scary, but scary. Not not like, you know, don't show that to the kids right before bed. And yeah, Spider Punk is just absolutely hilarious. And. Yeah, and they managed to save some civilians. You're amazing. We make a good team. Very sweet. And I, I like the... What's that? It's a metaphor for capitalism. And then, you know, I, I forget who, but someone says, no, it's something worse. There's nothing worse than capitalism. What capitalism has wrought is... And yes, I do realize that I'm praising something that was created under capitalism. Let's see, yeah, and all of them have to go back to HQ. And I love that it is, like, upside down when they go, you know, just... Yeah. And... So far, Spider-Man and it's wearing a mask. Why? To cover its face. And and one of the one of the you know I I really appreciate that because they could have just had a person sitting in the car from right away. No no no. The car drives up and then afterwards a person sits in and apparently you know I I guess in the comics there is a Peter Park car. Yeah. Earth 53931, Peter Parked Car, Sentient Automobile. So, yeah, I, I really appreciate that. Uh, yeah. And we get the, the Spider-Man from the Spider-Man 4 game. And Prowler from the live action, the, the MCU version. So, you know, I still do really feel bad that... Childish Gambino is not going to get to play, you know, Donald Glover aged out of playing the the actual Miles Morales, but he got to be face-to-face -face with Miles Morales and playing Prowl, that, that was, yeah, 
see. And yeah, Miguel is not like the others. And you know, there's that thing, there, there's the narration of his thoughts. I've come too far to stop now, which is always, you know, that right there is like red flag. Oh, that's, that's villain talk right there. You know, okay. Not only villains say that, but you got to be careful if you're saying that. And I like the thing with, you know, the elevator slow. He likes it like that. And Peter B. Parker returns, and he's showing off pictures of the baby. And Miguel is trying to be serious, and Mayday is crawling on his body. It's like, you can't. And I like that, you know, Mc, uh, uh, Miles just calls it the Spider-Verse. And Miguel has this really complicated, like, sci-fi name for the, the universe. And then he admits, okay, that sucks too. And, let's see. Yeah, and it is still Zoe Kravitz voicing Mary Jane M.J. Parker which is really great. And yeah, the, the you know, Miguel explains how they're all connected and we see Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man from the 2012 film and yeah, they talk about breaking canon can collapse a universe and I appreciate that, you know, it's we know it be, Miguel knows it because he tried. You know, he tried it and it didn't work. It's not one of these, you know, the moment that you have these big, it is technically an exposition dump. You know, he's explaining all this stuff, so it really matters that, no, 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 I, I tried this. This is not something that maybe or maybe not, no, no, no. There, we have a failed attempt to point to, you know, that makes us relate to it so much more than if you just read it in a book or someone he doesn't know told him or something like that, you know. Because at the end of the day, like, he does become an antagonist in this and, and very likely the next one also, but it's, you you can understand how, you know, it, it isn't just this, um, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, and and Jeff uh, will become, you know, in in two days he will become the captain. The model says, and Miles has to let him die. And the same thing for Gwen's dad. And we see Toby Maguire, and anime. There, I've, um, is that the Japanese Spider-Man? Maybe I remember reading that he was going to be in it. And Penny has a new suit. And let's see. We have the line, let me down easy. And yeah, Miguel puts Miles in a cell and he breaks out of it using the Venom Blast. And... So the, yeah, the pointing meme, I know some people, I, I remember YMS really hated seeing it in the trailer, you know, it got a huge laugh in the, in the theater, and yeah, I, I did think it was really funny as well, and yeah, T-Rex and Cat, Spider-Man, and the the therapy Let's see and the the 60s spider-man is I can do anything he can do and the Western where it's like okay we draw on three one two and, you know z z webbed up his face and attacks and we have a physically disabled I I didn't catch her her name but yeah, that's really, really cool. Oh, wow. I just saw the spider, the, the, 
the Tyrannosaurus Rex Spider-Man is called Peter Ptarker Spider Rex. And let's see the but but yeah, you know the the I'm not going to repeat it because I've understood that one of the words is um ableist, but the the you know for, at, at least for use by the the able bodied the the um, yeah she makes a, a the the disabled spider man spider woman makes a joke about you know do you think that's why we make all these jokes just yeah that was yeah that was great very funny and <laughs> Peter B Parker really badly wants Mile to Miles to to hug Mayday and he says you know he had Mayday because of, you know because of Miles and and that is a great that you know that's how you grow character and still keep them fun you know yeah have them go through something like that because it absolutely is he he you know yeah by the end of the first spider-verse movie yeah he he wants kids because he wants to make so and and here he he spells it out you know i want i want to to make another one like you because you inspire me so much and Um, I do not know what that means. Yeah, I'll just move on. The, the, yeah, Gwen and Peter B. Parker knew some things that they were not telling Miles, which is, of course, very upsetting and Miles says he managed to lure the spider people away and Venom zaps Miguel and the Avatar and Lila try to stop the go home machine and yeah and Gwen gets sent home which also really tells, you know, it was really important for her to be part of the Spider Force and to try to prove herself to Miguel. So that's obviously. And, I, you know, um, Mary Jane explains about, you know, there's no playbook for spider people we just have to make adjustments at halftime and then she's like do you understand that because that's a sports metaphor <laughs> which is you know he is kind of nerdy and mary jane sometimes teases him so it's yeah and yeah you know at first it seems like gwen isn't going to talk to her father and you know, we see a shadow, a shape, and it's like, oh, it's a guy, and, you know, she does the flip and turns out to be a penguin. <laughs> and he says, lay off the penguin or something like that. And, <laughs> and I like, the, you know, and he's like, you're not even going to look at me. And she's just there. What are you doing? I'm looking at you like you asked me to. <laughs> And, you know, she explains, this mask is my badge, which I really love. That's something that, you know, some, sometimes when I try to explain comic books to people who don't really care about comic books, that is the thing, you know, they point to why, why a costume, why a mask, you know, and I, yeah, this, this scene does a good job of explaining that. And she realizes 
he's not going to be captain. You know, Miguel thinks that things are set, that there's no other way, and that, you know, the problem is that he's basing it on, you know, of course he can't change what he did. He can't, there's no time travel in this movie, these movies, you know, some of these, but not, not the Spider-Verse movie so far, at least. So he thinks of it as set in stone, but that's, you know, and that's, that's the mistake we can sometimes make when we look at something, you know, we can think of it as, well, if it happened like that, then it can't possibly suddenly happen like this. That's not, that's not how things work, but that's, you know, that's real, that's not, that's not being rational and logical, that's, that's the brain trying to protect us from further trauma. So, it's very, very emotionally intelligent writing here. And I appreciate that this is a movie where Gwen hugs her father at least twice in the same movie. I, I really appreciate you know, media that shows that, yeah, sometimes teenagers and their parents actually do get along really well. And we get the montage near the end as Miles swings and remembers things, just like in the first one. I really like how chatty they made Ben Riley. I mean, I guess everyone is chatty in this maybe not as much Miguel but it, it was it was fun too and, and it's actually I believe it's the first thing the first Andy Samberg performance I do not think I've watched any of the movies he's in Neighbors? Toga number one cameo yeah I don't remember that at all. I, I remember vaguely a toga party, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's not, I, I don't, um, don't think I've seen anything else that he, but he does, he's, um, he, he's the one with the, the band, uh, Lonely Island, with the, yeah, they, they, they made that, that one song, like, six times, I'm a douchebag, it's, yeah, some, some of those versions are kind of catchy. I realize they made other songs, but I, I don't think it was necessary for them to make so many songs that boil down to, you know, I, the character I'm playing is a douchebag. Anyway, then we have... Yeah, I like, you know, Miles says, I'm strong because of you, he says to his mother, because of dad, because of us. I'm Spider-Man. Who's Spider-Man? Which is funny. I, I do hope that in the third one, he does actually come out and say it to his real mother. But, you know, it's a funny joke. I'll, I'll grant it. And yeah, turn you know this is a universe where there is no Spider-Man. And and there's the thing you know, did you shoot webs out your butt? No, well in a in a dream. Are you sure you woke up? And yeah, you know Miles wasn't sent home. He was sent to the wrong dimension. Because the dimension that where he was bitten were the the you know yeah the the you know now that I think about it wait a second okay so he got sent let's see he was the machine analyzed his genetics and sent him. Because, you know, now that I actually think about it, I, I'm not saying it's like a plot hole or something, but I will admit, now that I really think about it, I don't completely understand why the, the, 
why it sent him to the wrong one based on the DNA that the go home machine because it scanned him yeah anyway um, I'm sure I'll, I'll later it'll dawn on me and yeah you know he's Uncle Aaron is back and he's like oh I missed you and it's like you know oh that's Uncle Aaron realized this is not my miles this is there's something wrong here you know and you know he says okay we gotta roll and, you know, we the viewer come to the horrible realization this is a universe where Miles Miles and Aaron commit crime together to get by because Jefferson is, is dead. And... And Gwen talks to Miles' parents does she get it wrong? I, th I think she accidentally refers to them by first names again. She's dressed, you know. Gwen, when you find him, tell him it's five months grounded. And that we love him. And... Yeah, we learned that, you know, Miles has been tied up. And he's not... Aaron is not the prowler. It's, you know, Miles from um, Universe 42 that's the Prowler, and it's just, yeah. And, let's see, then the, um, um, I cannot tell what that's supposed to mean. Yeah, and Gwen and various others, including Spider-Ham, Spider-Noir, Penny are going to try to save Miles. You know, and, and apparently like Spider Punk delivered, you know, the the thing to to Gwen's father just in case. And we end on a to be continued. So there we go. Yeah, really, really loved the movie. I am so hyped for the next one. I'm glad it's only so. It's gonna be like a year. It looks like. Yeah, it, actually, I guess less than a year. Oh, a female-focused spin-off of these is in development. I. I really look forward to that. That's going to be great. The female characters are some of the best characters in these two movies. So, yeah. Holy crap. So, Gwen and Jessica. Yeah. The, the, maybe more of Spider Bite by, you know, Amanda Stenberg's character. Yeah. Really, really looking forward to yeah let's see the the um, see I don't I don't mind when Sony does this I just I wish they would stick to animated spider-man movies because that's like both of these have been so good it's it's only a problem when Sony try to make non you know to try to make spider-man related movies that don't feature spider-man and just, I'm not saying it'll it'll never work. I'm saying we're three movies in and it hasn't so far. You know, I enjoy Venom 2, but I'm not going to claim that the two Venom movies, and especially Morbius, are particularly good. Anyway, um, yes. With all of that said... I uh, this yes this is the end of the video so let me know what is your favorite spider person in this I was about to say or any other media but honestly I'm not entirely sure that there are any that aren't that don't at least appear in this 
what do you hope for from the spin-offs? What do you hope from for what do you hope for from the third movie? And yeah, do you think this is going to be one of those where they take it into two where it's going to be amazing like with Avengers 3 and 4? Is it not even going to happen like with Justice League 1 and 2? Is it going to be kind of meh and you could have just done one movie like Hunger Games 3 and 4, you know, yeah. And with that said, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one or more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, and one talking about the most recent episode that I've personally been able to watch of the True Lies show. One for the most recent episode I've been able to watch of The Clearing, and one for the most recent episode I've been able to watch of Scream Queens, and I also am working my way through the Star Wars animated shows. I just got done with Rebels, and, you know, I am watching Resistance now. I suppose I could real quick give you a date. It looks like the, yeah, the 13th is what it looks like when I, if looks like is when I will talk about the first season of resistance and if I, I hope to do at least one more video this week and let's see, yeah recently we've been thoughts videos telling about very similar to this one in other words if you want more videos like this you're in luck you can check out my back catalogs was catch my next week i hope you enjoyed watching as i enjoyed watching and recording and i will catch you next time with great power comes fantastic movies at least when they're animated